Hallelujah. Good morning. Today is a great day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today we're celebrating Usher's Day at Mount Pisgah. And i um, like to say happy Sunday and happy Usher's Day to all the ushers that are out there in Ecoland, uh, which is also known as the cyber, a.k.a. the Internet. So uh, happy Usher's Day, everyone. I'd like to start off with a few announcements, if you will, and then we'll move on into the service. Please remember, don't forget to vote. So please vote. Uh, don't forget to complete the 2020 census. The deadline is approaching, which is September uh, 30th. We also want to thank you for the tithes and offerings, which are, will help continue to uh, grow Mount Pisgah's ministry. We also want to uh, remind everybody that next Sunday, September um, uh, the 27th, we'll, we will have the marriage ministry inspiration uh, service. We normally have that on the third Sunday, but it will be held next Sunday. Let us pray. Dear most heavenly Father, who created the heavens and the earth, who's able to do exceedingly abundantly all that we may ask or think. We come to you today, Father, asking that you have mercy upon us, Father. We ask that you have mercy upon our land, Father. We ask that you remove all hatred and bitterness from the hearts of everyone. And we ask that you restore love. For God is love. And you remind us to love one another and to love you. The Heavenly Father, we thank you for the shepherd of Mount Pisgah, Reverend Langston. We ask that you continue to keep a hedge of protection on her and her family members. The Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless all the parishioners, friends, and family of Mount Pisgah, and everybody that's under the sound of my voice right now, Father. We ask that you touch them where they need to be touched, Father. For some right now are in need of a spiritual healing, Father. For you say, don't grow weary in well-doing. The Heavenly Father, some right now are in need of a physical healing, Father. For you created the earth and everything that's in it, so please heal them, Father. Touch them as only you can do. The Heavenly Father, some right now are in need of a financial healing. Father, we ask that you bless them right now financially, Father. The Heavenly Father, some right now may have lost a loved one, and they're in a season of bereavement. The Heavenly Father, we ask that you provide a friend or a family member or someone just to call on them, just to comfort them. To let them know that they don't have to go through this season alone. And dear Heavenly Father, we'll be sure to give you all the honor, glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. We will now have our scripture. The scripture today will be um, read from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Then we'll read Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, and then we will read Romans chapter 6, verse 23, and I will be reading from the King James Version, and it reads, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away, behold, all things become anew, it's Hebrews, for the word of God is quick and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Romans. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today, we're celebrating Usher's Day. And as always, uh, we celebrate it by reading the Usher's Prayer and the Usher's Psalm. And I'd like to just take a moment to uh, say thank you to all the Ushers out there. And we ask that all Ushers celebrate with us this morning. So whether you're a member of Mount Pisgah or not, we uh, invite everyone to celebrate with us today. Um, and the Ushers uh, have a special duty. Uh, because you're, we're the first people that people uh, see when they walk into the church. So um, we sort of, and we should set the tone uh, for when people come into the church. And that's a very important uh, responsibility 
that we have because we have no idea what folks are going through when they're walking into uh, the church building. Uh, some people may have some heavy hearts. So ushers should smile. They should set the tone to make it a very great day. Uh, so uh, that's just one of the many responsibilities that the ushers have, as well as uh, sort of keeping order in the service, making sure everybody had their fan, because for some reason not, people get hot in the church, don't they? And when they don't get hot, they get too cold. So uh, and it's the usher's responsibility to make sure they have their fans or whatever they need, uh, offering envelopes, anything that they're, uh, to make sure that you as the worshiper uh, can sit down and enjoy the service in a comfortable fashion. So again, uh, that's some of the responsibilities of the ushers. So if you will, I will read the ushers prayer and then the ushers song. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, bless the Lord. This thy servant, as thou didst bless the son of Levi, who ministered in the holy temple, and grant me devoutly to minister in thy house, and thy name be hallowed, that the kingdom come and thy will be done through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. Amen. The Usher Song. The Lord is my light. He is the joy of my salvation. Of whom then shall I be afraid? I am a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. Yea, though I meet with unpleasant conditions, I must keep smiling. For I must enter into his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Yea, though I walk through the shadow of unkindness, I must smile. For the beauty of the Lord is upon me. My countenance is filled with light, the light of love, patience, and endurance. I shall strive to give joy to the sorrowful, hope to the lost, sunshine to the darkness, and I shall remain a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord as long as I live. Amen. We'll now turn the service over to our worship and praise team. Praise the Lord. This morning when I rose, I didn't have any doubt.
Lord, to Jesus, I surrender. surrender. second verse goes, all to Jesus I surrender, humbly at his feet I bow. I surrender. like this. All to Jesus I surrender.
God freely gives. I surrender all. And so God, we come surrendering our all to you, O oh God, today. That you will have your perfect will and way in each one of our lives. Oh, whatever you might be going through today, I invite you to surrender it unto God. To turn it over to God, for God knows everything. And he can handle it better than what we can. Surrender your lives unto God. Surrender your will unto God. So whatever it might be, that God would continue to have God's perfect will and way. I surrender all. Hallelujah. you just take a few minutes hallelujah just to meditate on the lyrics I surrender ah oh, you've been struggling all week long hallelujah no need to worry cause God has it all in God's hands I surrender there is nothing too hard for God to do. Our scripture this morning comes from the epistle, the second epistle of Timothy, verse chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Second Timothy, the third chapter, verses 16 and 17. And it reads as such. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproach, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete thoroughly and equipped for every good, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good. And if we can just use for a few moments this morning, Create an environment in which the Spirit of God changes lives. Create an environment in which the Spirit of God changes lives. Let us pray. God, we surrender all to you. And so we ask you, O oh God, to have your will and way in this service, O oh God, and in us and through us, O oh God. Those that are listening, oh God, those that are in on Zoom, those that are listening on broadcast, wherever they may be, that, oh God, that you do a new thing in each one of them, oh God. As we come, oh God, we come yielding our will and our way unto you. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, oh God, be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Have your way, oh God. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproach, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good. Creating an environment in which the spirit of God changes lives. Most of you remember the 2006 movie, Pursuit of Happiness. The movie was about a struggle 
of a single father, Chris Gardner, played by Will Smith, and his five-year-old son, Christopher Jr., played by his son, Jordan Smith. Everything goes wrong for Chris. His wife abandons him and their son. He gets arrested over unpaid parking tickets. He loses all his money and, and gets evicted from his apartment. He is forced to take refuge in a subway bathroom and then a homeless shelter at a local church. Even though Chris eventually lands a job as an intern at, at a prestigious brokerage firm, the, the position does not pay any money. He endures many hardships, but Chris refuses to give in to despair as he struggles to create a better life for himself and for his son. When you think about pursuit of happiness, its main point is that you must never give up on your dreams and desires. No matter what obstacles come your way, you must never all sell yourself short to anyone else's opinion. Amen. So here we see in 2 Timothy, Paul encouraging Timothy not to give up on his pursuit to follow Jesus Christ. Paul acknowledged that living in Christ is very important even though the journey is not easy. Paul does not uh, does un uncover from Timothy the things that may, he may encounter to try to sway him from going in the right direction. The false teachers, people who are lovers of them, themselves, of vain self focus people that are lovers of money, impelled by greed, people are, who are boastful, arrogant, abusive language, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, profound, ris disrespectful, all unhuman, malicious gossip, hanging or oh, holding to a form of godliness. Paul tells Timothy, not only is he going to run across some uncouth folks, but he himself will face some difficult days ahead. At the same time, he may feel stressed, he might feel anxious, and, and, and in his difficult days, it may seem hard for him to bear. But he tells him, don't give up, because God, God did not give you a spirit of fear, but of love and of a strong mind. But in order to endure, Paul encouraged Timothy to draw from the well of faith that was instilled in him from his grandmother Lois and from his mother Eunice. And he, from what he had learned from him, Paul, Paul even thought, even said, even though I suffer, I know the one whom I trust. I am sure that he's able to guard what I have entrusted to him until the day of his return. Oh, in other words, we may suffer and go through some things, but we have to know who we believe in, and we have to know that he's able to keep us from falling. He's able to keep that which he has entrusted unto us. I've often said that some of us are here today because of the prayers and the teachings of the inspiration, inspired word of God that came from our parents and our grandparents. They knew the word of God. They knew that the word would instruct us. It would convict us of our wrongs. They knew that the word of God would correct us. But most of all, they knew that the word of God would give us wisdom your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light on my path. It would give us power. Paul says in Colossians, we are strengthened with all power according to his glorious mighty so that we may have great endurance and patience. He gives us power to be able to stand. In the word of God, they knew the word of God would lead us to salvation through faith with Jesus the Christ. Paul wanted Timothy to know, as well as us today, that even though it may seem impossible to live by faith 
Christ and Jesus Christ and these difficult days that all things are what? Possible to them that believe. You wonder how you have made it this far because you walk by faith. How you made it this far because God never left you. You wonder how. But in order not to abandon the faith, you have to create an environment in which the Spirit of God creates or changes lives. Therefore, we have to guard ourselves from our own thoughts. Guard ourselves from false teachers and separate ourselves from people and things that distract us and try to hinder us from doing which, that which is right and from being all that God has called us and equipped us to be in Jesus the Christ. You have to learn to inspire people by the word of God instead of manipulating them. You must realize the word of God equips us for every good work in order to create an environment in which the spirit of God changes lives. We have to guard ourselves from our thoughts. No matter how hard we try, it's hard sometimes to live 100% Christ-like at all times. Amen. Why? Because some people rub us the wrong way. We get up on the wrong side of the bed. In spite, we have a spirit of depression or, or because of gossip all around us, because of peer pressure. We all sometimes take on some type of attribute that would hinder us from being the best that we can be at all times. Paul stresses that point in Romans that we have a desire to do good, but the human inside of us sometimes seems to take over. He says, I know that no good thing lives in me, meaning in our flesh nature. I was read, I was reading a post and it says, stop testing, stop testing the new me like the old me ain't still in me. We know that, that at times the old us will come out. Not only do we know, do we know that the old us will come out, but Paul knew that also. A different way of living does not save anybody. No cursing, no drinking, stealing or hanging around, those will do that. It's not a good practice, but it, may, it, it will not make anybody saved. However, when we acknowledge our sins and, and accept Christ as our Savior, we are changed on the inside, and change on the outside will soon follow on the outside. Oh, he says, Paul said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he or she is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new creating our environment in which the Spirit of God changes lives, we have to recognize what is godly. And one of the ways that we can do that is by testing our thoughts and our ideas against the Word of God. For the Word of God is living and acting and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as, as far as the division of the soul and the spirit of both the joint and the marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and the intent of the heart. Oh, if you just lay it beside the word of God, God knows our thoughts and he knows our intentions. In order to create an environment in which the spirit of God lives, you have to learn to inspire people by the word of God instead of manipulating them. Sometimes parents manipulate their kids to be good by waving an object or an event in front of them. We manipulate our children to think that, I, that they are rewarded based on their behavior. We must, we most, when most of our parents were growing up, the word of God was preached as, as fire and brimstone. If you eat certain things, you're going to go to hell. If you, if you, uh, if you think certain ways, that you go, you're going to go to hell. If you dress a certain way, you're going to go to hell. If you drink certain things, you're going to go to hell. If, if you go certain places, you're going to go to hell. Scripture is God's breath. And it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and changing 
and righteousness. We all have sinned and come short of God's glory. But when we accept Jesus as our Savior, then God does not credit our, our, our account man's sin to him. When his sins are not imputed to him, then man is not subject to the wages of sin, which are death. By God's grace are we saved through faith and not of our works, which leaves us no claim of having any righteousness from our own merits. The word of God is not used to entrap us, but to give us what life. When we teach the word of God and not manipulate people with the word of God, it creates an environment in which the spirit of God changes lives. I'm so glad when we, when we do good, do we do wrong, that God does not close the door but it's just right in the sand. Do you remember when the Pharisees brought the woman caught in adultery? They made a stand before the group and, and just they said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery, and the law of Moses commands us to stone such a woman. Now what do you say? And there were they use it. Uh, they used that question to trap him. But Jesus bent down and it started to write on the ground with his finger. And when he kept on questioning him, straightway he looked up and said, Let any one of you who without sin be first to throw the stone at him, at her. I'm so glad when we fall and falter. Oh, he just writes in the sand. I can imagine when he looked at me, he wrote, she's my child. She just continued to write in the sand. You have to learn to inspire people by the word of God instead of manipulating them. One writer said, true inspiration is not manipulation or brainwashing, but an invitation to pursue something higher and better than one has had before and in the process gain a sense of meaning and significance for one life. And so in other words, when I accept God into my life, I got joy, unspeakable joy. When we are inspired by the word of God, regardless of what we might encounter, we will be encouraged and strengthen to face what is happening in our lives. And we will be able to come overcome the pitfalls with the, word, with the help of the word of God. Three, the word of God equips us for every good. Paul told Timothy, even though I have faith in Jesus and some of the people love me, I still went through some things. I was persecuted, I suffered, and I was in distress. I was able to stay the course because of the word of God. Paul wanted Timothy to know that he was able to make it through because of the word of God. The word of God equipped him to stand against the wiles of the devil and to do every good that he needed to do. So in order to continue to do the work that Christ has set before him to do, and though he, he was, in order to create the environment, he first had to believe that the word of God would change him. And when it changed him, he gave him love for the unlovable. When it changed him, it gave him joy in the time of trouble, and when it changed him, it gave him peace in the midst of a storm. If it gave him self-control when he wanted to do a vengeance, but he realized that the word of God said revenge belongs to me, he gave him compassion when he wanted not to show compassion. It gave him a kind heart to those who were helpless, it gave him faith in the time of despair. 
and it gave him rest in the time of unrest when God's word creates an environment of change in our lives then the spirit of God will come through us and enable us to change the lives of others that we come in contact with because when the word of God it'll change us from the inside up but you can't expect to create an environment in which the Spirit of God changes lives until it changes you. And when it changes you, you will be able to influence others. When it changes you, it will be able to, to encourage others. When it changes you, you'll be able to motivate others to know that God before me, who can be against me, when the word of God comes in you, then you know that he'll fight your battles. You know that the Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? When the word of God comes in your life and creates a spirit that changes lives, then I know that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. When God creates an environment in which the Spirit of God changes lives, I can call on him and he'll answer and show me great and mighty things. When God creates a, a spirit of an atmosphere that changes lives, then I know that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me, who when he increased our environment that changes lives, I can say, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Oh, when he creates an environment that changes lives, I can say, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the courts of wickedness when he creates a spirit that changes lives, I know that this old world can hold me back. When he creates a environment that changes lives, I might be down, but I know he'll pick me up. He'll rock me in the cradle of his arm. Oh, oh, oh. when I know that I know when the Spirit of God changes lives, we'll all pursue a life that is in Christ Jesus because the Word of God will equip us to be able to stand in times of trouble. I don't know who uh, God's talking to this morning, but I just want you to know in your home may not be the environment that you're looking for. On your job may not be the environment that you're looking for. All, all around your kids may not be the environment that you're looking for. But I just tell you, speak the word, and the word will change them. Speak the word, and the word will cleanse them. Speak the word in the environment that God has called you. Speak the word. So I've just come to tell somebody, don't worry about who's in the White House, but speak the word. You got to pray and pray without ceasing. Speak the word. The word will change. Hallelujah. It'll change you. How many of you know that the word changed you? Hallelujah. If it had not been for the word of God, I would be still in the mark and the miry clay. But the word of God will change you and give you an environment that you're able to be in that would change the lives of those that are around you. That's what the Word of God wants to do. 
So I've just come to tell you today to hold on to God's unchanging hand. No matter what you might be going, if you just keep the word in front of you, you don't have to do the changing. God will do the change. Hallelujah. There might be somebody today that is out of the ark of safety, that wants to be in an environment that God is able to change your life. I extend the offer of Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. He is the one who saves to the utmost. So today, today, for tomorrow might be too late, for today is the day, a new day for the rest of your life. So if you give or want to give your life to the Lord, wherever you are, I just ask you to lift up your hand and that you repeat after me, Lord, Forgive me for the wrongs that I've committed. Lord, I ask you to take control of my life. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Hallelujah. And if you have repeated those words, you are saved. I just want you to know, because you gave your life to the Lord does not mean Satan won't be on your back. But you just speak the word, and God will, the word will create an environment that the devil would have to flee from you. So today, we welcome you into the kingdom. Hallelujah. We also extend the invitation for those who would like to come and join and work out your soul salvation here at Mount Pisgah AME Church. The doors are open.
surrender our all to him. I pray God's blessings upon you. That you not worry about the things and the events that are going on all around you. That you not worry. Even when the doctor may give you unfavorable results. Because we know a, a God that can do anything but fail. Oh, in this season of pandemic, some have lost their jobs. Don't be so high-minded. God said you have not because you ask not. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Surrender it all to God so that he may create an environment that you're able to praise him. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne. The wise and eternal Savior. Unto him all honor and glory belong. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. amen.
more time. Oh, you came, you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. I died to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Oh, I lift your name. 